Introduction to Vision Impairment. These videos have been made in collaboration with school professionals, children and experts in the field. Through the content of the videos, we hope to provide a useful place to start in understanding the individual child's needs and strategies to support learning. Additional resources are signposted throughout each video. Thank you for watching. A young person with a visual impairment can do everything that another young person can do, they just have to access it in a slightly different way. I was kind of born with this visual impairment because it's, it's due to genetics. Uh, so I've never noticed a difference. I'm Oliver and I'm 11 years old. What do you like about school? I like science, so maybe I'll do some science related things some when I'm older. George has visual impairment. He has cataracts, which means he has a filter on his, on his lens, which is cloudy. He can't see very well. He has his glasses to help him. And then obviously we have to use different additional needs to make sure that he's catered for in class. I've been playing the guitar for about six years now. I'm also a composer. I'm planning to apply for the university. So I'm planning to apply for the Royal Birmingham Conservatoire for the composition course. A teacher is a visually impaired or a qualified teacher is a visually impaired, that, that is my role. We are in an advisory role, uh, but we are very much advocates for the children um, to ensure that they get the exact appropriate education that they actually require in order for them to be as independent as possible. So we're there to make sure that um, all school staff, uh, whether it be lunchtime supervisors, the head teacher, the class teacher, year group teachers, teaching assistants, everybody understands the visual impairment and the impact and specifically in the impact it has on that individual child in that individual educational setting. What do new teachers need to know about vision impairment? Visual impairment is a difficulty with the eyes, the optic nerve, or with the cerebral cortex of the brain. That means that even though they wear glasses or contact lenses, potentially that cannot fully correct the vision. We work with a number of children with a visual impairment and uh, for some of them we have very stable conditions but some of the children have what we would call a fluctuating condition where uh, maybe as they hit puberty their, their vision permanently changes. We also have children where their diagnosis means that throughout the school day and throughout the school week their vision can change quite significantly. In the morning, they're much more visually alert, they're able to uh, read smaller print, and they're able to be much more fluent with their work. But as the day goes on, they get what's known as visual fatigue. Children on a morning will have much better sights than they will in the afternoon. There are um, two in 1,000 children born with a visual impairment in the UK currently, and of those children, there are approximately 50% of the children born do have an additional learning disability. The misconception with visual impairment is that actually most people will say that they can see. So people um, will see them reading very small print and assume that that just means that everything's fine. Um, they will also look at them and they don't outwardly look like they have a disability. A significant number of children that um, are supported with a visual impairment, they only have minor changes to their eyes or no changes at all. The visual impairment team, they come to see us in September to talk about his deterioration um, with his cataracts. He's had an operation before, but unfortunately they have um, come back. So obviously his needs are now different. So we have gone to the library service. We've ordered him extra large print library books. So he can come in and choose different books that will benefit him. We have ordered him a larger print dictionary so that he has the same needs as everybody else. What is vision impairment? Vision impairment is a broad term used to describe limitations in our ability to see or process visual information. The term vision impairment includes blindness, low vision and partial sight. It is common for a young person with vision impairment to have additional special educational needs or disabilities. Different causes of vision impairment and associated experiences of vision mean that educational interventions vary from child to child. A child's level of vision impairment may be progressive and or fluctuating. Vision may fluctuate through the school day. Who does it affect? Vision impairment is low incidence and affects roughly one to two in 1,000 children and young people in the UK. Only approximately five in every 10,000 people are severely sight impaired or blind. 
What are the proven strategies available to teachers to help children with vision impairment succeed? I have to get through the logic state because then we get to the point where we can do it with, with ease. You need to think very carefully about the environment of your classroom and the sort of whole school environment. Uh, teachers need to think very carefully about accessibility, so can a young person access the sort of materials. I think it's really important that consideration is given to peer awareness around a young person's need as well so they feel fully included in the classroom. The model that we work with is the access to learning and learning to access. Access might be through the means of modified books in large print, they might have technology that supports that and they have access to the, the whiteboard in modified ways and it may also mean that the child has adult support but as they go through um, we want them to eventually that they learn to access so that they actually have their own equipment, they direct their learning they understand what their disability is, how it impacts on them and they can verbalise exactly what they need um, so that then um, they are actually able to be independent. George is brilliant socially in class, he's fantastic, he does, he, he's always got lots of confidence, he's his peers, he's always got lots of friends, his visual impairment doesn't stop him from, um, from being a, a great friend and being socially active. Advanced planning is absolutely essential, so that you have a range of resources, that you think very carefully about your seating plan and about your uh, lighting conditions. George will sit on his chair most of the time and where he feel, feels comfortable to see. He always sits at the back of the class, so then he can see the board clearly. Um, when we then we go back to tables, he's able to use the iPad to go and take photographs of the board, which then he takes back to his table, so he's able to see the lesson clearly on the iPad. All the children, all the other children love it too, they all copy him. They're like, oh, miss, we can't see. So then they go and, oh yeah, go and get an iPad. And then it, he doesn't feel, um, he doesn't feel special, he doesn't feel different. So everyone's doing the same thing. Young people uh, might need additional time uh, because they may be, uh, the text that they're reading might be in large print or braille, uh, but it's really important that you consider that in, uh, within your lesson and within your planning as well because the pace of a mainstream lesson can be very, very fast. You don't have the luxury of lots and lots of time. Bye, mate. See you later. Mobility training, uh, you're going to be assessed on a journey. Usually you will, you will have a few sessions with the, the mobility training teacher and this teacher will uh, guide you. After you have done enough sessions, this teacher will assess you. If you do that without any problems, you are allowed to go to that place whenever you want. These liquid level indicators are um, helpful tools in the school for, um, you know, children who can't see and may have trouble pouring themselves a drink. I always try to get my work in advance. Sometimes they will print like exam papers uh, in a, a larger font size, but I still prefer to have everything digital. It just makes things much easier. Imagine that you have like 10 past papers and then it's all of them will be in A3 and maybe with a different font size. So you'd have many paper to carry and that can, sometimes can be a little bit heavy. I was learning Braille last year, however this year I'm not learning it anymore. If there's something that I cannot read, you can use some kind of speech software. They are able to read out loud to you what is written. Uh, I take with me something called a CCTV, a portable CCTV actually. If you have a textbook, you can uh, uh, flip the colors around and also you can uh, enlarge it as much as you want. I do my own testing with the children um, regularly or three, four times a year, so then I have to take into account that actually I need to go and enlarge the, you know, the text for him to make sure that he's okay with it. Mild vision impairments find it quite hard to see pencils. They benefit from having bold black pens. As a child gets a little bit older, they're not keen on using felt tip pens because they think it makes them look young. They use a handwriting pen um, but what they do is they actually rub out. So um, we've got scientific apps that are available on iPads and tablets. These are permissible for use in exams as well at GCSEs. For some young people they might have um, quite a lot of TA support 
other young people might just have TA support in certain lessons and some young people are very confident and very independent uh, with their equipment uh, and they won't have a TA at all. So uh, it's really important to plan uh, and I think it's also very important that ultimately we want young people to be as independent as possible. So uh, it's also training the TA in how they effectively support a young person so they're not doing the work for them, they are facilitating them, they are supporting, they are scaffolding. I would say that the main thing was the mobility lessons because I've learned how to go on the transport by myself. Um, with that I can just go to wherever I want uh, and I think that's something, that's something really important for being an independent student. From our perspective, early intervention is absolutely key. So in the first instance, you're, you're supporting the parents and the family, but what you're also doing is supporting them to actually develop the child's additional skills that they maybe need to learn. Me and his mum get on really well, and she's, she's always happy. she always comes in if there's any problems. And again, we had the meeting at the beginning of the year with the visual impairment team, and mum come and sat in with us, so we was all able to discuss you know, his needs, how he, what he was happy with doing, not doing. My main advice to uh, new teachers is to get as much information as possible. Don't be afraid to ask the young person about the visual impairment. My best advice to support a child with visual impairment was, would be to talk to the child, to build that relationship with them, then they'll be able to talk to you to be able to tell you what needs that, you know, what makes them feel comfortable and what help they need. The best way to understand that would be uh, if the teacher could have the chance to talk to the student individually and ask, and ask the student, oh, what do you need, how we can help you. Consider your blinds and your lighting in the room. Think about actually controlling the light through the windows because that will aid children's access to their, their written work but also the interactive whiteboard. Which areas of need is vision impairment related to? It has a strong connection with communication and interaction, cognition and learning, and social, emotional and mental health difficulties. Which techniques are helpful for pupils with vision impairment? Access to learning. This is ensuring that the learning environment facilitates the child or young person's education. For example, using enlarged lesson material, clutter-free spaces, multi-sensory learning experiences. Learning to access. This is supporting the child or young person to develop skills to become independent learners. For example, using specialist apps on tablet computers, using a screen reader or magnification software, or advocating for adjustments. So tablets have become a huge thing in learning, both primary and secondary. Uh, the only thing that we stipulate is that the child has their own one rather than sharing one, just so that they can fully access it and manipulate it, zooming in, magnifying, taking shots of everything, so that they can control their learning. Where can I find more information about vision impairment? Advice on some useful apps is available here. www abilitynet.org.uk forward slash news dash blogs forward slash apps dash students dash site dash loss. A list of resources including best teaching practice guidelines are available via the Vision Impairment Centre for Teaching and Research on the University of Birmingham website www.birmingham dot ac dot uk forward slash schools forward slash education forward slash research forward slash v i c t a r forward slash resources forward slash whole dash school dash s e n d dot a s p x the r n i b also offers support www dot r n i b dot org.uk forward slash services dash we dash offer dash advice dash professionals forward slash education dash professionals. We would like to give special thanks to the young people and parents for their invaluable contribution to the creation of these videos. If you have any questions, comments or feedback on these films, please get in touch at info at wholeschoolsemd.com. This project was funded by the Department for Education.